Hello photographers, I am Kita with Kita Explorer Photography and I am back today for the February Photography Challenge. So I hope you enjoyed last month's challenge about whitening teeth. So if you missed out on that, go and check that out. I have that video linked below and get into that challenge as well. But in today's photography challenge, I'm going to share with you how to change a background of a photo in Photoshop. So make sure you stay all the way to the end so you can see how long it took me to change the background and steps on how to do it. So let's get into today's video. And before we do, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. It is free for you to do so and it helps me provide more and better content to you in the future. Now for real, let's get into the February photography challenge about how to change a background in Photoshop. So before I share my screen, again, I'm going to time myself with this timer here on my iPhone. And with this photo, I took this photo of a client a few months ago and they wanted this photo with the street art. It was in a tunnel, there were cars driving past. I had to be very cautious about the flash and the lighting. It was cloudy, it was a lot going on and I didn't even like this background. The client did, which is fine, but I don't like it. And I would love to change the background behind my subject. So that's what we're going to do in this video. And I'm going to talk through what I'm doing as I do it. So let me share my screen. So we are starting. So as you can see, I have started the clock and I'm wasting time, y'all. So first of all, I'm in Photoshop and I want to duplicate this background just in case there is a mistake. You have the original available as a duplicate. So I'm gonna work on the duplicate background or a duplicate photo and I'm going to go over to like this tool here this quick selection tool I'm going to click that and click on select subject so it's automatically going to select my subject I'm going to blow this up a little bit just to see like okay is this selecting everything and as you can see it did not select her earrings let's blow this up a little bit because it's like at, at a size two we can't even see the point there now that might be too big um, I'm gonna make this bigger actually because it's gonna be hard to really get these these earrings here because they almost blend in with the background. So I'm just make this a little bit smaller and I'm gonna try to select the earring. And so as you can see, it's selecting some other things here. So this may not be the best choice. And obviously it's selecting things past the earrings. So I'm gonna hold down on a Mac the option key. I'm sorry, I don't know what it is on a PC. I don't use PC for Photoshop ever. But I'm gonna hold that down to deselect the area. And it may not be completely perfect, but we'll, we'll get it as perfect as possible. But obviously we don't want this here either. So this is, see, this is where it becomes a problem. Cause it's gonna start doing all types of other funky things here. And then we have this other earring here. Like this earring is hard for me to even visually see what is going on. So what it's doing is like trying to select things that are, are near it, um, which is fine, but it's making things a little difficult, right? So another thing you can do is go to the Select and Mask tool to kind of refine the situation because it's the whole situation right now with this, how, how close these earrings look to the background. Um, so you can, it's on the plus. So if you do plus, that means you're adding more to your selection. But if you do the minus, then you can, ooh, that is a big brush there. You can fill, like, paint into the area you don't want part of the selection. Um, so that makes it a little bit easier because you're gonna fill this in and it won't automatically select the, um, it won't automatically select the entire photo. So it will do stuff like that sometimes, but we'll go back here in just a moment to clean that up. And so let's just check the other parts of the selection to make sure like, okay, do what it like, what is this? Oh, let me put a minus here. Like, what, what is this? Like, we don't need this part. This is like something part of the wall. This is not part of her clothing. So obviously you can keep on, you can do fine tune this as much as possible. 
um, which is what you really want to do for the photos. If you're if you're going to publish it and give it to the client, you definitely want to make sure it is as crisp as possible. We're not going to do all of that today because I'm not giving this photo to the client. You really gotta pay attention like, okay, is this really picking up my entire subject? Is it including things that I don't want included in, in my subject, right? So this is part of the actual wall. So we don't want this included here. So Photoshop is not perfect when it comes to its selection <laughs> around the subject, but at least it saves you from using the lasso tool because the lasso tool you'll have to freehand the entire selection. And it will take you some time unless you have a very, very steady hand. So I have finished going around and doing as much as I feel like doing for this photo. Cause I could definitely go around more like the more, oh, the more I um, look at the photo, the more I'm like, okay, I could, I could fix that. I could do that, but we're not gonna do all that. We'll, we'll be here a much longer time getting into more and more details. But obviously the cleaner, the better. So once you go, you finish refining your selection of your client, then you click OK, you go back and it's going to have the selection around the entire subject. Now to remove the background, so you know I copied the background. What I'm going to do on a MacBook is push Command Shift I. So that now flips the selection to everything but the subject. And then what I'm going to do is delete it. And so if I just hide the original background, the duplicate, you'll see that that she is the only thing there now. But if I, I can always bring it back if I would like, but we're going to keep it like that for now. It looks like the selection is pretty decent. I'm going to make this bigger. Um, and we're going to take the selection off. Obviously there's some things I could clean up here and you can always clean up these things by getting the eraser and just removing those extra things off the side that you just are like this does not look good if you if you didn't get a clean view of your subject during the selection process so there are different things that you can do you could always fill in the background if you would like with just the color um if that's what you want to do so you could do something like this. Obviously you have to click in all the different areas to fill in the color and what have you. So if you go back, you see that's like that, like, uh, oh, <laughs> I don't really care for it. So I'm going to undo. Now another thing you can do is bring in another photo for the background. So I'm gonna just slide this other photo. This photo is something I took myself and I'm just, I just slid it here into Photoshop. So as you see now, it's like just sitting on top of her. We don't want that. And it's like not the right size. So we're going to resize this so it takes up the entire frame. So I'm gonna click the check mark now. That should be better. But as you can see, it has covered her up. So now I'm going to slide this underneath the subject photo. And now you see she's like floating in the middle of the air in this photo. So maybe you want to resize her. You can make, you can move her around. She could be hanging off this, this, whatever this is, this tower here and standing on the roof. You could, let's see, we could resize her to, mm, let's just like cut this in half. We can resize her and, and put her just, you know, like up here on the roof closer or maybe just standing on this roof you know you could crop her all her legs off so let's do that let's crop her legs off maybe let's hide this because it's throwing me off uh, we'll just we'll just erase her bottom half then we're gonna bring the background back in and we're gonna move her okay that's that's pretty good so it looks like she's standing over there obviously like the coloring is completely different and <laughs> she is that just looks really weird there but i just wanted to show you how to replace a background here and that's what we did she is being fabulous in all france 
and I can't complain. <laughs> um, so with all my complications, as that photo was a lot, the background was blending with her skin color. It was blending with her earrings. There was a lot of things going on that I had to smooth out and fix in the photo before finalizing the selection. That could change based on what type of photo you have. It could take you longer or not as long. And it just, it really depends on what background you're selecting to place into the photo in this replay in the, in, instead of what was originally there. So with all that said, it took me 16 minutes and 28 seconds to get this done. So that time could vary based on how detail oriented you wanna be and based on the photo. Okay, photographers, so I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of me replacing the background of a photo for my, my uh, client, for my subject. I'm not sending her this photo, but <laughs> it was just a fun activity to show you all. And I wanna see what you do with a background replacement using Adobe Photoshop or whatever editing software you use. I would love to see your photos. So please make sure you tag me in your photos on social media at Photography by Kita on Instagram or Facebook so I could check them out and see what creative things you did to replace your background. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit that like button. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. It is free for you to do so and it helps me provide more and better content to you in the future. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. Make sure you share this video with your friends, family, and social media networks so they can learn how to use Photoshop and replace a background for themselves. And if you're interested in supporting my business more, you can always visit my Photoshop at keytoexplorer.darkroom.com. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day or night, wherever in the world you are. Bye.